Having done a little design work for our bank account and our bank program, it's now time to turn and look at how we can do some design. Now remember, design is the stage where we actually start to think about how we are going to solve this problem in a program. And of course, we could approach that in different ways. You could write pseudocode and sketch things out. A common way to do it is to use another UML diagram called a class diagram. So for the analysis, we used one of these use case diagrams that allow us to, to list the things that can be done with the system. The class diagram, as the name implies, allows you to draw in a pictorial way the classes that are part of your system. It turns out that draw.io has a number of different styles of putting classes in, and I'm going to use this one here. And so we need to start thinking, what are the classes that are going to go inside of our bank program? Well, uh, odds are good we're going to need one that is a bank. What else are we going to have to have? Well, let's come over here. Our bank has a customer involved. We probably need to store some data for that customer. So let's go ahead and create a class that represents a customer for us. What else do we need? Well, we have, we're mentioning accounts here in our use case diagram, so we probably need a class for an account as well. And if we look at our use case diagram, we've covered the accounts. Deposit and withdraw are things that happen to the account. What about an address? Well, that's something that our customer is going to need to know. And just in order to make this a little bit more object oriented, I would argue that we might actually want to have our address be its own class. That class might do things like verify that what they've entered is at least a reasonable address and it's valid. Now, you probably notice that each one of these boxes is divided into three sections. The top section clearly shows the name of the class. The middle one, as the text that starts off there implies, is for the fields, the data members that are part of our class. And the bottom one is the methods that we can call on the instances of this class. All of these have little plus signs by them. It turns out the plus indicates that these things are public. If we want to show that they are private, we use a minus sign. It's interesting to note that UML class diagrams typically actually use the Scala notation for type. So there's a colon and then the type after it. So let's start thinking a little bit about what should go inside of our bank. What type of fields are we going to need inside of here? Well, the bank probably needs to keep track of the accounts and the customers. And as we've seen, if this is going to be a mutable bank, those should probably be private. So I'm going to make an underscore customer, which is, as we did before, I'm going to make this be a list of customer. And part of the reason why I want to use a list is because if I were to use an array, then I have to do something called defensive copying if I ever give outside code access to it because the array is mutable. The list being immutable, uh, is kind of safer to work with. I have my accounts, which is a list of account. We're probably good at this point. Uh, that's the main data that is associated with our bank. What can we do here? Well, this is actually where we'd probably go back to our use case diagram. We can open accounts, we can close accounts. So how about we put in some methods for that. Open account. Close account. One thing about as we're going through doing this design, it's quite possible we're going to skip things. In fact, a lot of times when people are doing UML class diagrams, they don't even fill in all of these boxes. A lot of times you only draw the box and put the class name in it so that you can show relationships between the different classes. Those relationships are indicated by lines that we would put in here. So we could make connections between things. We'll come back and 
let's say we want to do that there. This type of line is going to indicate and it's the fact that the bank is made up of customers. And so on the far end of this, we're going to put a little diamond there. The bank also happens to be made up of accounts, so we might want to have a similar type of line there. So we have an open account, we have a close account. It might be nice to have some other methods that can search for things, you know, so that you can get information uh, about stuff. Sure, how about we just call those, so for example, find customer and maybe find account. I haven't put arguments here or return types. We haven't thought through that that far yet. Uh, we'll come back to that. What about the account? What information do we have inside of our account? Well, something we definitely have to have inside of a bank account is a balance, and as you can guess, that balance had better be private. The other thing, and this you might not guess, is that the balance should probably be an int. Turns out that you really don't want to use doubles for representing money, because doubles are not 100% accurate. They are represented in binary, and so they can't represent all decimal numbers perfectly. In fact, it turns out that point 0.1 is not nicely represented as uh, in binary. And since people like their dimes, that could cause a problem. Instead, we'll use an int, and what we will store is cents, as opposed to storing dollars and having to have fractional values there. Other information that I want here. Well, my account should probably keep track of its customer. The customer is not going to change, so I'm actually going to be willing to make that one public. We're going to have it so you cannot transfer an account from one customer to another, if you wish to transfer funds or something like that, you would have to close out the first account and make a new account for the second customer. And it's also helpful if all of our accounts have some type of an ID, okay, like your uh, account number. I'm actually going to use a string for this. Now you might think, well, it's an, it's an account number, right? Yes, but a lot of times you might realize that the numbers that you use, there are two problems with using, for example, an int. One is a lot of them actually start with zeros and an int can't start with zeros. Also equally important is that a normal int only gets to represent well, nine to ten digits. Okay, you can in that tenth digit you only get a zero or a one and it's quite possible that your account numbers for security reasons will to make sure they're all unique and very hard to guess will actually have a lot more digits than that. So a string is a safer way to represent this. What about methods? Well, the balance is hidden. As we saw before, I will probably create a method called balance that is just there to access the, the private underscore balance. I want to be able to do the two activities that we have in here that are associated with accounts. I want to be able to make deposits and withdraws. Deposit clearly takes an amount which is an int, and gives us back, how about a boolean, to tell us whether or not it worked. And withdraw an amount, which is an int, and it gives us back a boolean. That seems reasonable enough for the account at this point. What about our customer? Well, our customer probably needs to have a name at this point, I'm not going to allow our customers to change names, so I'm willing to make these the name as a public string. Other information. Well, it turns out that inside of the program, it might be helpful if the customer also has some type of an ID that isn't their name, because as you're well aware, Two people can have the same first name and last name, but the IDs will be unique. It might also be helpful to keep track of what accounts they have. This one is going to be uh, private because we can add accounts. You could possibly close accounts. And so this is going to be a list of account. 
and I also need to keep track of their address. We said in our analysis that you can change your address, so I'm also going to make that private, and then we'd have a public accessor method for it. The address itself is probably going to be made up of just a list of strings. And uh, maybe it would be good to have uh, some type of a verify method around. that can tell you whether the address is happy or not. I'll add more to this. We want to go through and have kind of a more complete design, but I'll do that offline, and then we'll come and look at all of the different methods that, that we have, and then we'll talk about how we're going to implement those methods.